Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. How's everybody doing? Good? Have a good time? Sick of walking around, taking a break for an hour? Yeah? Okay. Um, we, we, uh, we're laughing because we're all looking at each other going, so who's running this panel? And we're all looking at each other like, it's somebody that's going to be... I don't oh, know. He might be in charge, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and we've decided you're running it. How about right, that? Well, yeah, we, so um, this is the Batman Day panel that has Harley Quinn taking it over as well, so we have some Harley Quinn people. Um, but we're going to go down the line and introduce ourselves and, and, and uh, what we're doing, so John. Okay, uh, my name is John Timms. Uh, I'm now working on Harley Quinn, uh, on the art of Harley Quinn with Jimmy and Amanda. Um, yes, that's, that's it. All right. <laughs> uh, Peter Tomasi, not working on anything Batman related at the moment, <laughs> except as James was kind to point out that uh, I do have Damian Wayne and Super Sons, and I do seem to have some appearances lately of Batman in the books, and I did a thing called Batman and Robin for about 30 years, so. Uh, that qualifies. That's about it. Uh, I'm James Tyne in the fourth. I'm the writer of Detective Comics, um, and I've all, I also wrote the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover, the sequel of which is coming out in December, um, and a bunch of other comic books with Batman in it. So, happy Batman Day. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Palmiotti, I co-write uh, Harley Quinn with my wife next to me, and um, I'm also writing a Jetsons miniseries that is bizarre, uh, coming out soon in November. And, and I'm Amanda Connor, um, I co-write Harley Quinn with Jimmy here, and I also do the covers, um, and occasionally I do a Jetsons cover, or six for Jimmy, and, <laughs> and some, you know, when people ask me to draw stuff, I go, you know, when I have time, I go, yeah, I think I can fit that in. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you all. <laughs> So, so we don't have a presentation of these great screens. If anybody wants to stand in front of them and look, you know, vogue a little bit, that's great. But <laughs> Batman pose. Who yeah. Batman pose. But, but this is what, the third Batman day? Or is it the fourth? Third or fourth? Third. Batman. Third Batman day. So if we, were, if we were not here, right, we would be probably at our local retailers and doing signings and getting giveaways, which I was like hoping they would have for this panel, right? But I don't, nothing's organized. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, here's a good way. <laughs> Program here if anybody wants it. Uh, I, I have. I, I, who here is is challenging themselves and trying to get to the convention and to a Batman Day store signing? You done it already? Yeah, you did it. <laughs> All right. Did you, did you get any free stuff? Did you bring stuff for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh my God, that's awesome. Oh, you okay? Right. Oh, very cool. Some more All these. Right. All right. <laughs> I didn't get one. Yeah. Since we're husband and wife, this might come in handy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move this down to the other end of the table. God. Um, so I guess I mean many, but yeah, I think the, probably the best way to maybe go into this is. Get your question, because I mean, you're reading, I guess, the books, so we don't have to tell you, hey, how did you like that issue you just read? And we can't, they ever, you know, there's DC sharpshooters all around, so we never can really talk about what's coming up, aside from giving you a general broad stroke or something. So maybe we should just open it up to uh, you guys asking any crazy ass questions you feel like asking. Anything. 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 Yes. All right. I have a question for James. Uh, you may have talked about this in other interviews, but. Uh, probably the most surprising thing to come out of your Detective Comics run is having Clayface on the team. Uh, it, it seems like such a bizarre thing to even imagine. Like, what what made you decide to do that? Um, honestly, Clayface has been one of the biggest surprises in writing Detective Comics because he started. It started out as being a kind of practical uh, decision because a lot of the it, building a team book, you want characters who have different abilities who can kind of do different things and. Uh, I was building a team and the majority of the team were like, they were Batman characters. They were sort of street, street level ninja style characters who all had that like rough ability set. 
Um, and so in talking to my editors, they were like, we need a wild card on the team. And on top of that, you also want someone who's got an interesting silhouette who kind of like would be interesting on the cover. And it was just like, so it's just like, uh, there was a half second where we were talking about maybe man bad on the team, but then I kind of centered on Clayface. And the thing about the, that was incredible in Clayface is uh, like he's a really funny character to write, but he's also he's also really sad in a way that's very human to me, um, because he's someone whose life got out of control and who uh, you know kind of everyone decided he was a monster and he allowed himself to become a monster. Um, but Batman's also someone who has had who has had a very bad day and had to build himself into something new and. Because of that, he believes that there's like that, that Clayface doesn't have to be that, and the, the heart of that relationship has really given me so many incredible stories. And like the there's a big storyline after the upcoming uh, Return of Tim Drake, which starts this Wednesday, which is called A Lonely Place of Living. But after that is a big arc called Fall of the Batman uh, that Clayface is very central to. Um, and I'm finally going to get around to telling the uh, the full like rebirth uh, in continuity origin of this Clayface because he's definitely I definitely picked and chose like the best iconic pieces of Clayface to build my Clayface and uh, I, I'm really excited for people to see that story. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, outside of the original uh, Batman the Animated Series, um, my favorite Harley is the one that they had in um, Gotham City Sirens, because they really made her really complex. She dealt a lot with her feelings with Joker and how she's kind of abused, but she's still kind of addicted to him, because by the end of that series she goes back to him. Um, how do you guys see Harley as you're writing Harley? What, what is her, what drives her, and, and oh, what motivates well. her? <laughs> um, the, way, the way we've handled Harley is, She's slightly in the future. Our, our Harley right now is slightly in the future from what goes on in the regular, you know, the, the, con, the, the continuous, yeah, the Suicide Squad, the regular DC continuity. And um, she's just one of those things, she still, you know, is torn about the Joker, but she's trying to pull away from him because she realizes him that he's really toxic for her. And, um, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm sure there are many people here who have had rotten relationships, but you still have a hard time getting over them. That's, that's what's going on with Harley. So she's, she's trying really hard to um, just be around people that are good for her and get rid of, um, you know, the relationships that are bad for her, but she still feels sort of magnetized towards, you know, she likes the bad boys. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's that's sort of how we handle Harley, and you know how she struggles with it all the time. So, and we, we and when we started the book, we decided that if a book's going to be called Harley Quinn, bringing the Joker all the time is just going to be it's just going to be leaning on other characters. Again, that's why we took Harley out of Gotham because she was a secondary character there. No matter how big the character became, it would have just been another character in Gotham. So, we felt we had to take her out. Get her, start her own, you know, start her own life, restart her a little bit, um, get her own supporting uh, cast that worked with her, that dealt with her insanity on a daily basis, and uh, and then um, and then build a character there. We were able to revisit Joker once or twice, but if if we made it all about the Joker, it just would have been then we should have called it Harley and Joker, which we kind of did in the backups with um, uh, Paul Dini and I did, and again that was set in the past. Uh, but we, tr we, our goal was to take a character and make her stand on her own and not be dependent on other characters. And I think after four years, I think it finally, you know, it, it's kicked in that that's that. But you know, once in a while we have people going, you know, I like the old Harley, and I'm like, yeah, you can find that everywhere else too. It's one of those characters. If you like different <laughs> kinds of Harley, that's pretty much the Injustice. The games are good. Injustice is a great comic, and the Suicide Squad. So it's it's all over the map. But for us, we see it as our. It's a little bit past everything in, in the future, and she stepped back and became her own woman. Yeah, my thoughts. So, Harley Quinn has really, really made a big pop culture pop. I mean, she's gotten to the point where she's in hot topics. 
and people who may not even read comics or aren't familiar with it are still attracted to that to that character. What do you think it is about that character that's allowed it to actually climb up the echelon from like <coughs> a cartoon character that wasn't even in a book to the phenomenon that the character is nowadays? Yeah, I mean, you know, Bruce, Bruce Tim, and uh, and uh, Paul Dini created a great character, right? And uh, it appealed to a certain amount of people, and I, I just think it's one of the few characters in comics that can actually change her costumes, that can change her look constantly, and people still identify her, and I think it just comes down to attitude, the idea that she, she's impulsive, she does what she wants, when she wants to do it, and whether she's being good or bad, it's still, she, she takes, you know, she takes the responsibility of what she's doing, so I think a lot of people see her as a wish fulfillment character and unpredictable. And I, I can honestly say when you read Harley as a character, I, there is no predictable part in the book. Even when we write it, we tend to go off in crazy directions and not every, you can't do that with every character. You can't just throw caution to the wind and go nuts and there's something about her. I think you have some ideas. No, I mean, that's I mean, what you said. She has a look that and like no matter how many different types of costumes that she wears, they always have that look and it's really, really graphic and eye-catching and it's recognizable for miles, you know? You know, it's always that, that red and black or that red and blue and the diamonds and the stars. It's like, it's so Harley. And I, I, think, I think it's just, she's just graphically pleasing and instantly recognizable. And I think a lot of the people that don't recognize her from the comics sometimes recognize her from the games. And now they recognize her from the movie and everything. And um, yeah, she's just, she has that appeal. And I think it is the attitude. I, I also think DC was overdue to have a big fem another female character. And yeah. Wonder Woman, you know, we love Wonder Woman, but she's kind of perfect. You know, she's an Amazon, she's got, Harley is the complete opposite. And it's probably the most fun we have is when we put Wonder Woman and Harley together because they are nothing like each other. And, yeah. yet, and yet they kind of can get along. So, I mean, anybody, John, what do you think? I mean, no, Agree with everything. I, I think. Uh, I love Johnny. Agrees with everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and especially that uh, she's very human. I mean, uh, yeah. it's, uh, made mistakes every time and try to get out of all the mess that generates uh, the, the situations in she seems to. But um, as Amanda said, uh, the graphic part is, is really nice. I, I mean, as a character to draw. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, just perfect. How about you? Yeah, back we're off topic, but um, <laughs> to like a uh, relationship between Harley Quinn and Batman would be kind of, which one would be kind of cool? Is there <laughs> She thinks what? Bruce Wayne is a better Well, yeah, she, I, that, that happens in the Valentine's Day special. She, okay. she kisses Bruce Wayne and she's like, wow. And then she kisses Batman and she's like, you know, you can take a few lessons from your pal Bruce. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, she, she um, in our book, she, she doesn't have the hatred for Batman as much as she does like earlier in her life. She still doesn't like him because she sees him as a villain. Like she's the guy who makes, you know, her and friends of hers miserable. So she sees him as a bad guy, you know, and she sees herself and her friends as good guys. And um, so, um, but she doesn't, you know. I'm, I'm sure, like in the future, you know, they'll they'll have another tiff. But um, she doesn't have trust for him, and she doesn't. Uh, you know, have a lot of love for him, but she still finds him interesting, you know. So, so yeah, it's like we try, try and complicate it up a little bit. It makes for, for really fun reading. I got a question. There's a couple of Harleys in the audience. Any Harleys? Who would you rather kiss, Batman or, or Bruce Wayne? Any Harleys? Anybody don't want to admit it? Not just, would it maybe fist? Who wants to punch Bruce Wayne or punch Batman? All right, punch Batman. They do both. You kiss him and then punch him. All right, that's very Harley of you. That's great. <laughs> Right there. Um, I know beforehand there was a the Harley Quinn Power Girl team up. Are we, is there a possibility for another one of those in the future? Because that oh, was amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I we the what Jimmy and I used to work on uh, Power Girl together with Justin Gray, and um, we love that character so much that we just enjoy putting her with Harley Quinn because. Power Girl is such a good straight man to Harley's like goofiness. <laughs> so. Um, and, and it's fun to make, you know, people who are very serious and, you know, Power 
girl's not that serious, but she tries to be, you know, she's, she's always trying to live up to the Superman legacy, but she can't always quite do it. And when you pair her with Harley Quinn, it's just fun. You know, it's a lot of fun because they're so unalike. You know, like her and Wonder Woman. They're so not alike. And um, there's always a lot of eye rolling, you know. Like Power Girl is the ultimate eye roller. <laughs> I have a question on the panel, especially you two guys. Who, 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 if you could team up Batman with a character, like that would be fun to write. Who would you think would be the one you guys would go towards? Uh, the, like, I got to play with this very briefly earlier in the year, but uh, Batman and Zatanna play off of each other incredibly well. Um, and getting to kind of like put back some like backstory between the two of them uh, when Bruce was training and all of that. Like, I, I love the dynamic between those two characters and uh, I want to write that relationship a lot more. You should. Just pitch a Batman Zantana book. Yeah, yeah, no, I, like, <laughs> I've, I may have had a few conversations after, uh, after that. How about yeah. you, Pete? Um, Batman and the Haunted Tank, I guess. <laughs> the Haunted Tank? <laughs> it's such a Pete oh, you know, answer. It has to be a tank. That's doable. <laughs> yeah, it is doable. Yeah. You could totally do that. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, it's, it's tough, I guess. I mean, happy Batman and Jonah Hex. Batman Jonah Hex, sure, oh. sure. A little time travel. I like to do time travel stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. That's yeah. cool. Who, who do you want to draw, John? Batman, Batman and who? Who would you like to draw? Uh, well, I, 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 I know it's, it's, it's... Be crazy. Probably, uh, no, but uh, probably too easy, but I really like uh, Harley, Harley and Batman. Batman. Harley and Batman together? Yeah. 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 To, to, um, facing someone... Uh, uh, Probably forced by something that uh, she needs to face. Uh, right. Yeah. I don't know. It's cool. Maybe something for from other space or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Look at the Harley right there. Cool. Yes. Right. Yeah. Always yeah. plus. Oh, is it? You named Harley too. <laughs> yeah. Very convenient. I like how you guys have made Harley Quinn more of an anti-hero. Like she's not like the villain. She's probably my favorite version. Of Harley Quinn. What is all of your guys' favorite version of Harley Quinn? Oh, there's so many. Yeah, for yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, the animated show for me, probably. And then, because um, that was the first one, I think that was the one that just kind of imprinted right on my head, you know, my brain. That was the one that kind of hit me first. I, I'm like, I, I, I've loved all of the incarnations of Harley, and they, they it plays off of so many different aspects of the, the character. Um, I really enjoyed, and I'm totally gonna forget uh, who worked on this. It was the first Harley ongoing series that I picked up every issue, but Terry Carl's- Dotson. Was it, yeah. was it Carl Terry? Carl and, and Terry Dotson? Yes, yes. that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, I thought they did an incredible job. Um, and yeah, that I, I used to pick that up like every month when I was, uh, you know, just uh, just as I, when I would have been like out in the audience with you guys. Uh, so, yeah, that, that run meant a lot to me. Cool. What, what you about you, John? Uh, well, I, I, I really love the, the Harley. The, the current? We are, yes, yeah. the, the current one. Yeah. I, I, it's I, a good I, answer, John. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But uh, I still love the, the, the cartoon one, the, the first yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's one of our favorites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. You see how the Harley's taking over the Batman Day panel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Just uh, like Batman Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back there? Oh, you? Hey. Yeah. Uh, what was your favorite Harley episode from Batman the Animated Series? The first Harley and Ivy episode. Like, yeah. I think that really, I think that episode more than anything else defined who Harley Quinn was as a standalone character and is probably the reason that the character is lived on. Which, what, which episode was that? What, what happened in that episode? Because I've seen them, but I haven't seen them in like chronological order. Oh god, I, I mean it, I think it was the one where they're, uh, the shopping one? Yeah, the, the, yeah. The Christmas the, where they kidnap Bruce Wayne? Yeah, I think, I so. is that the first one? Yeah. Yeah, I think we met where and it, like, and he can't yeah. resist. Yeah. I think that's the one. I yeah. love that one. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's it. They, I love the comic book version of that one too. It's just so cute. I can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a question. Uh, 
question for uh, Pete. Um, I uh, I really enjoy your enjoyed your Batman and Robin run, and I just wanted to ask uh, when you were approaching the silent issue with Damien's uh, death, like uh, that was really powerful. And I just wanted to ask, like, um, how you and Pat like approached that that uh, right. topic. Uh, the question is, how did I approach the writing with Pat um, drawing on the Batman and Robin uh, Requiem issue? Um, it was, I knew I wanted to do a silent issue at some point in my career, so to speak. Um, so that seemed like the perfect one to sort of encapsulate all the grief that, that Bruce was going through and, and, and felt like that was a time to do a wordless story. And, um, and the only thing that, when you're, when you're a writer and you wanted to take on a, story, a silent story, you better damn well have a good artist to pull it off. And I knew Pat was would be able to really, you know, pull up all the small details and all the emotional beats. And uh, so I, I, you know, we talked about it. But then I wrote a silence. The script was no dialogue, and I really just had to think. Like, um, there's there's an old thing Hitchcock said that if if you can turn if you turn the volume down on all his movies, you don't need to hear anybody talk. You can actually watch the films and understand exactly everybody's motivations and everything that's going on. And I sort of took that approach in my head when I was writing the script to say, you know, what, what visuals would be able to just get across all the grief and not need a word of it? And that's really the way I approached it. And, and then Pat just obviously, you know, brought it to life in his own inimitable way. So, but it was, a, it was a lot of fun to do. And it's been many, 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 many cons now have come and gone where just a lot of people breaking down, you know, still, still crying about that issue. So it's, a, it's nice to have touched a lot of people. Back there. Hey, so um, I haven't seen Suicide Squad. I honestly went a different way with Harley and Joker's relationship. I was wondering, how did you feel about the relationship? Did they ruin it by going home the romance, or would you prefer? Oh, they should have asked us if they made the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it would have made more sense when they got to the top of the building and she said, "All right, can I pull a chopper to get us out of here?" Like, right? um, the, the relation, it was interesting, you know, the, the movie seemed like it was setting up a, a bigger story and then it looked like halfway through the movie it went a different way. You know, I, I, uh, I felt the movie was entertaining, but the, their story was not clear to me. And um, I'm hoping the second one, they kind of grab onto it a little bit. There was a lot I like. I mean, we love what Margot Robbie did. She was a great Harley Quinn. You can't deny that. If she was in the movie, you know, 80% more, it would have been even better for us, you know? Um, that, that said, it, it just, um, the relationship they established was an odd one, and then, you know, I, it, the whole helicopter scene, you know, was odd, and then she's disappointed by him. I, I, I just think, uh, you know, they needed a villain for the movie, and they threw in the Joker, but I'm not so sure. And they threw in, the, obviously, the one that makes toasters fly through the air. What was that character? Uh, referred to Ghostbusters woman? Yeah, whatever. Enchanted, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, it, you know, I, I, look, I enjoyed the movie, but I was like, I, what is going on here? You know? Am I the only one? No, no, right? No, no, no. There was so many great things in the movie. Like, it, like it was, you know, the, Will Smith was awesome in the movie. I, you know, there was so many great characters, but they thought, eh, you know. Maybe they should have called us all. Yeah. Especially this group up here, we would have, yeah. we would have tweaked it. <laughs> that said, I'm hoping that, you know, Sirens, maybe in that movie, they kind of explore it another way. Or I would love if they kind of built the character up without the Joker so much for a movie. Yeah. You know, let's see who she is, let's get where she's from, and then let it go from there. It, it seems that dependency, it's sort of like in the beginning, Batman movies had to have the Joker. You know, and then and then they just they, I just feel like we got to get to know who she is first before we start going into that stuff. So that's my opinion. I don't know. What, right? What yeah. Think? No. No. It makes sense. It, it makes sense because you you don't want the character that you're trying to build up to depend on their characterization by depending on another character. Right. I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What would yeah. you guys have done? I mean, differently. You've seen the oh, movie? You've both seen the movie? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I would have we got this hand grenade and throw it over here now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it was too big for the first film. I thought yeah. another world ending third act was oh. something that should have been avoided for a movie about Suicide Squad. Uh, being a guy who loves war movies and, and historical you know, mission movies like that, I thought it needed to be more of a lean, mean. Sort of, I, yeah, that would have been better. That like, would have been if they the first didn't one. have to. 
Yeah, why does it always have to be like the supernatural world yeah. ending stuff? Another, right? bu another just... building in the middle of the city, yeah. and another yeah. focal point of some energy thing crazy. Yeah, 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 they could have just gotten down and dirty with some characters that were totally human and yeah. they were just, you know, yeah. horrible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, just make one person escape and then send the rest of the Suicide Squad after them. I mean, yeah. it would have been a great movie. Yeah. A big chase movie. But yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. You know, one day. <laughs> one, one, one day they'll ask our opinion. <laughs> Until then, we'll just keep making comics. So, uh, you know. Does it, over the years, it seems like Batman has gotten a lot better and a lot darker and more violent and a lot of representation. <coughs> Batman and Superman, he was a straight up killer. What are your opinions on that? Do you think Batman's going to go in a darker direction than where we see it? I mean, the, the, there's a reason why in my detective comics there's probably more Batman hugging people than any other like, Batman run. It's a good title. Uh, Batman hugging is a good title. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, because the thing is, is that at the end of the day, this is like, you know, Batman's there to protect people. He's there because he cares about people, and he cares about preventing what happened to him happening to anyone else and that requires a lot of com compassion and I can't write a Bruce Wayne who doesn't have a lot of compassion. Um, I think sometimes he's bad at expressing the compassion um, like I, I think you know his, but I think that's part of what makes him an interesting character because he wants to and that's part of the core uh, thread of the series and the you know the other thing that I was really happy to see is that in addition to you know the like the, the darker tone in some of the live action movies this year also brought us uh, the Lego Batman movie which was a like an insanely fun celebration of the entire uh, history of Batman um, in a way that that feels very of the moment and is a story like is a very core Batman story. Like I, I, I walked out of that movie being like this, like surprised at how much they got right, even though it was a kind of ridiculous comedy. It was uh, so it's like I'm happy that we live in a world where we we can get a bit of both. Get a lot of sleep first, and then, uh, no. There, there was, um, well, she did, in, in one of the books, she did come across a fake Joker, and she handled it very Harley-ish. You know, she, she, uh, she had actually met him earlier in, in you know, one of the, the pre-rebirth books, and she tried to get him help, and um, he didn't go in the direction that she thought he should go in, and, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, he's no longer around. So that's yeah. yeah. I think she. I think. I think if she found out there were three jokers, she'd be glad that she's living in Coney Island, Brooklyn. You know, I think she. I don't think she'd want to have anything to do yeah. with the, any of them. At I don't that know. Point. I think she would go after them. You know, like, like to find out. You know, like to find out who's the real one. Is there like a, like a nice uh, the three? Because I don't. I don't really follow it. Is it the, the three are all horrible? Are there hasn't horrible? been much done on it. Oh, yeah, it's not like a happy one and a sad one, and like a, uh, like a uh, yeah, like, yeah, thank like, you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that would be fine. Good questions. Okay. You up front? Um, I have two questions, if that's okay. Yeah. So one goes back to Harley's relationship with Batman, the new movie that came out, um, Harley Quinn and Batman. It seems to be different than resenting him, if anything, wanting to work with him after the initial fight with Nightwing. What are your the animated movies? Uh, yeah. yeah oh, we didn't see it. You didn't see it, oh. believe it or not. Yeah. You know what? It was we. They they um, had it in San Diego, and that was the night that we had to do something else. Else, we would have gone to see it, and we haven't like watched it on TV yet. We have no light. So. We don't have no light. <laughs> All we do is work. So, by the way, I love your girl here. Oh, it's it's awesome. actually inspired by Jason Todd. Really? Oh, that's yeah. great. Awesome. And, oh, yeah. oh that's you know, great. I'm not looking at the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Red and the Outlaws with um, how it was in New 52. What made you guys switch um, Starfire and Arsenal to Artemis and Bizarro? Um, I like I, uh, the, I can't speak to exactly how that happened, but I know that uh, part of the reason, that part of the decisions oh. along the uh, those lines were they wanted to uh, 
like in going to the rebirth essence of the Teen Titans team, they wanted to bring Starfire back into the brand and going back and recreating the Titans as a brand, they wanted to bring Roy Harper back into uh, that classic mold and those relationships that they were building. Uh, so it was really, what do you, how do you build a new thing? And uh, for how the decision was made for Artemis and Bizarro, you'd have to uh, ask the writer of the book, but like that is, uh, you know, uh, as someone who briefly wrote Red Hood and the Outlaws, I, I do I do love the relationship between Jason, uh, Corey, and Roy. Um, and uh, Jason in particular is a character I very much want to get back to writing at some point. Have it right here, three minutes. Um, <clears throat> does anyone know if there's any plans for Damien and Bruce Wayne to go on adventures again? That's like a DC question, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we haven't, you know, obviously we had Damien and Bruce um, in the Super Zone, in a Superman issue, two issues. Um, so they're, they're together. I mean, Damien, I mean, you know, but he's out there. I don't know why they don't use him as much in the Batman stuff. Um, I guess every writer has a certain preference. I know I remember Scott thinking it was, he couldn't, he, he couldn't deal with having a 10-year-old in jeopardy, so he shied away from doing that. Um, so, no, I... I, I I'll, I'll be doing any any time you see Batman, he'll have Robin with him. They mean you know doing some fun stuff. So um, I'm trying to think if we have stuff coming up. I'll uh, I'll say that uh, Damien like Damien is a core character in the Batman Turtles uh, second series. Um, I know that's sort of outside the core realm of continuity. Uh, I built my detective team uh, pretty specifically out of characters who aren't appearing in other books, so that was part of the core decision why, uh, like I, I get asked a lot why some of the other core Bat family members like uh, Babs and uh, Jason and Dick aren't, and Damien aren't a part of that team, and part of it is because each of them are in about three or four other titles at that point. And, uh, once the character, like, and I think that that's been sort of the thing is Damien's uh, core story, I think, in, in the Rebirth era has been happening between Super Sons and Teen Titans. And that is sort of his current uh, moment. And uh, I definitely think there are plenty more stories to tell uh, with him in Gotham. But uh, I think that's why the, because the character is getting the spotlight uh, there uh, and we're building sort of his relationship and his connection to the entire DC universe. Um, it, like that's, that's been the priority the, the last year or so. Right there. Um, that's Harley Quinn. Um, she is a character with a death toll that isn't like strongly run around a strong moral compass or anything. How do you deal with that and still make her like the incredible, funny, lovable character that she is? We we sort of wanted to put a lot of that behind her. Like she's she's less murdery than she is in her. <laughs> she's word. still she's still got it's, it. It's something you see on a label of a, of a new product. Less murdery. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We we sort of yeah we 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 try to like like she's grown. You know she's matured a little bit. So you know yeah. There's there's less. She's stuff. still dangerous though. But she's still very dangerous. You know she's just. There are other, you know, we try and touch on the other aspects of her life that aren't the psychopathic killer, you know, because that's not all of who she is, that's just part of who she is. <laughs> so we, we try and address more of that, you know, like what she, what she does when she's not killing. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of, you know, we figure there's a, like a lot more to Harley than, than yeah. Although I will say once in a while we're writing a book and we're like two issues, three issues, and I'm like, she hasn't really killed anybody lately. You know, like, nobody's really... And then, I don't know if you notice when you read it, there's just a random thing happens, and all of a sudden somebody's stuffed in a suitcase, and that's us going, yeah, we gotta, kind of like, gotta you know, somebody. it's Thursday, we gotta, gotta get really murdered. It's gonna get a little more murdery today. Um, you know, but that's the fun of the character. I mean, nobody, it's not like, well, well we have a, the storyline we're doing now is she's running for mayor of New York, and, um, and that goes in a very weird place, and it actually gets very dark. For a little while because it has to because yeah. what happens it gets very very dark um and that's a little tough to write that because we have to we have to th something's at stake something big is at stake and she's and she's got to become the real psycho the real killer in in that so it'll be interesting to see how people uh read it because a lot of people read it and it's fun and everything and it's still fun in there that's the thing 
it, it's sort of like Three Stooges sometimes in a way, or it's like it's like it's excessively violent, but it's not the horrible, bloody, you know, crazy stuff. It's more, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, yeah, it's a little more <laughs> poke in the eyes. Eviscerate, eviscerate. Yeah, eviscerate. <laughs> there was somebody, uh, yeah. yes. Yep, yep, yep. I, 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 I think it was the companies just talking about doing a crossover, and that came up. And uh, happy to say, Paul Dini is is uh, writing that. So uh, I made the cover for the first issue. But Paul, it Paul happens to love the Archie characters, and of course Harley, right? So it's the perfect match. We, I don't really know what's going to go on, but I know it's going to be fun, and it's in the best hands. You know, that's that's the. Uh, I call I call uh, Paul and, and Bruce the mom and dad of Harley, so it's in either mom or dad's hands. It depends who's in the room. Yeah, so it should be fun. Right. Do you want to go right here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you probably all have seen um, the movie Batman Beyond: Return of the Joker, and of course, as you know, at the end of that, um, it's very heavily implied that at some point Harley became a mom and, and had children and possibly grandchildren. So do you kind of see that happening to her in her future, where she eventually meets some guy that, that she can have a healthy relationship with? Uh, you know, and then that's the end, and we no more Harley comics. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, you know, and it, it, your paycheck, no more paycheck. I don't, no more paycheck. I don't see yeah. why we can't have an interesting, you know, like, you know, like. Seniors, they're seniors. Anti yelling, yeah, yelling, yeah. Yelling, I, I, that's that's one of the reasons that we have cyborg in the comic because we feel like seniors are grossly underrepresented in comics. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna have, they can argue over the Alexa like that thing on YouTube. I don't know if anybody's seen the the uh, AARP Alexa. If you haven't seen it, it's probably the, the best the, thing. The Amazon Echo Silver. Yeah, Amazon Echo Silver. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, it's it's one possibility, right? So when yeah. they do those anime, that's one possibility. We we kind of change it every day. You know, uh, it's comics. We don't really want to end of the story, right? If they said to us though, they call said, we want you to do the end of the end story for Harley, the last story. That would be fun to do. I think they did it Marvel with Wolverine, right? Yeah. With the you know old man Logan kind of thing. Well, Maybe old the old lady. Question was: Is Harley? she capable of having a healthy relationship after the Joker having a toxic one? Do you think she's capable? Of I don't know because she is attracted to drama and nuttiness. So I don't know. I mean, she is capable of having kids. I, I got a question. <laughs> hey, how many people have a, a very drama fueled person in their life? Does everybody have like somebody they know? And yes. How are their relationships going? Are they going pretty good? <laughs> any ideas? No? Not going well? No. I, yeah. Put a finger to his head. Okay, there you go. Uh, I think it would make it for an interesting book, though. I agree. Yeah. I agree. On this side, back in the back row. Um, more on the cinema topic. Um, do you get asked often to do any advice or input on storylines that come up in films? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I, I gotta say, actually, the. the it obviously didn't happen for Jonah Hex, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. what? Really? Yeah. Um, that movie was so good. No, we really don't. Um, I, I, I wish they did because they, would they trust their characters so well in every month and every week of the character. Um, the the good part is I have somebody like Jeff Johns up there who you know writes all the characters, so at least they have Jeff up there. But nobody here, has anybody been asked to uh, no. do anything, Pete? No, I remember when the no. GL movie came out, I got the script and we were, you know, looking at it. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How'd that go? I don't know. How did that movie come out? <laughs> I, I actually was sent the Jonah Hex script and I read it and I said, here's the. It, Here's my issues with it, and they're like, "No, we weren't asking. We just wanted you to read the script." And I, was like, I was like, "Okay, well, thank you." Um, you know, they, it, they have their brain trust, and then we have ours, and never the twain shall meet. Yeah, the, the the good thing is that the uh, guys that write the movies don't really, come, you know, we don't. They don't really come to us for anything either. We don't, you know, we don't bother them. They don't bother us, kind of thing. One day that'll change, and in some films it has. Obviously, there's a lot of films out where, uh, 
you know, we got guys like Mark Miller and, uh, you know, a lot of different people involved with things. He does his own stuff, right? He does his own yeah. stuff, too. Um, but, you know, uh, some of the other companies, you know, we have Jeff Loeb uh, and uh, Joe Casada have a lot to do with, you know, the, the, uh, the Marvel stuff, the TV, the Netflix stuff. And you can tell that's run, that has comic book brains behind it. There's some great stuff going on there. Um, we, we have to, you know, as creators, we have to step out and do our own things. That's why creator-owned books are so important for us, because then we have control of what happens with the characters. But I, I hope one day they, they have a little more faith in us, or, or the filmmakers say, hey, you know what, that was good in the comic, why don't we uh, grab that and do that? So, I hope that answers that. I, I expect DC to call me later tonight. <laughs> have a nice talk. But... But like I said, we do have Jeff up there, so that's the, that's the big plus, you know. Jeff is nobody loves these characters more than Jeff, yeah, and yeah. that's all there is to it. Jeff, yeah, the gatekeeper. We have a good gatekeeper. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody loves him more than Jeff, so that's that's why this the WB shows are pretty awesome. And, yeah, you know, all that stuff yeah. is great. Yeah. I mean, was Wonder Woman the first movie that Jeff did have input on? No, Jeff. I don't think so. Yeah, Jeff worked on well, Green Lantern, right? And he worked. Jeff worked it with. Uh, yeah, on Superman, Batman, Batman, Superman, yeah. and uh, I know the JLA movie he's, he's worked with, and you know, he, Jeff is, I think all the films that go through there, Jeff, you know, works with the writers, the guys that come on, and I, I think at one point he was writing with Ben Affleck, but I don't know what happened with that, but yeah. you know, he was writing the Batman, next Batman movie with Ben, uh, so, but you know, it, it's, it's unlike a comic book where it's like, you know, it's three people or four people, if you ever will sit through the credits of a movie, all the way to the end, it's like 10,000 people, you know, and, and they're writing, and, and then the writers sometimes is like, you know, seven writers and then 140 producers, and that means everybody has input. Right. So it's kind of tough to get like this really clean, when a superhero movie is good, we're always like, yes, you know, yeah. because it's like, even with all the craziness, somehow this thing, Wonder Woman was great, like we yeah. love Wonder Woman. And it's just, it's just, it happened to fall into the right people's hands, you know, so sometimes it's, People's visions, it's all different. Everything through a different lens, right? So, yeah. Yes, sir? Uh, you spoke about Clayface earlier, and one of the things I was, and you talked about the importance of strong supporting cast. Sometimes that I, there, are book, there are certain characters in each of your books and writers and even artists that I love some of the secondary characters that you, you just fall in love with, because when they, when they come on screen, you go, I don't care what Holly's doing, let, let me do with Cyborg and see what Cyborg is doing or what the, um, the, the, the various groups that Harley, the Harley girls are doing, whatever they're doing. Is there a secondary, each of you, are, right or are, are there secondary characters in each book that you just fall in love with and you just kind of, I can't, I have to push away and focus on Harley, I have to focus on, on Super, Super Horror yeah. Batman. Are there characters like that in your book right now? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we've made a whole, like, you know, family for Harley. Not, not actually her, her blood relatives, but... Like, um, like she's just taken up with like the freak show in Coney. And there's actually a freak show in Coney Island. And they approve and of the comic too. <laughs> they, they told us that we love they love the comic. Yeah. Well, the other point, I want you to talk about I, when I see your con. I want to finish that just a second. Your character, but New York and your con like talk about how that's kind of a character and Harley Quinn. Also, in my opinion, I think New yeah. York is a character also. Yes. Oh. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's the quintessential New York boy. Yeah. If you read the comic, it's actually correct with neighborhoods. And when things happen, I, you know, I always tell John, I'm like, you know, that's west and that's east. And the Bell Parkway is there. So make sure it's going. And it's like, I, we don't even know if anyone catches that. I'm glad you do. Yeah. But it's like everything is aimed the right yeah. way. And, you know, how. And in fact, I actually, I mean, this is how anal retentive I am. When they had the scatapult issue and they were throwing bags of animal poo, I actually, you know, like went on Google Maps and figured out what degrees, you know, Coney Island is to where the J train, or yeah, the <laughs> it goes in and out of Williamsburg, and uh, you know, figured out what where you would have to like aim the scatapult in order to get a bag of poo to hit. A train on the tracks. <laughs> See the love and care we put into it. <laughs> and that's why I always take too long to do stuff. <laughs>
<laughs> well, it, it, it was, and it's funny too because making, putting her in Coney Island is, is a real place, yeah. right? And you know, DC is pretty famous for Gotham and uh, you know, and uh, Metropolis and everything. And I, I don't know why, but we just said no. We're going to put her in a real place and yeah. deal with the fact that people are going, okay, but where is Coney Island to Gotham? And I said, well, you got to take a train. <laughs> you can scanapult yourself to Gotham. It's not that far away. It's actually kind of close to New York. I think it's somebody said it was supposed to be like somewhere in New Jersey. Yeah. Right? And, like, still I'm not clear where. It's still not clear. I think there was like one map in the 90s that kind of put <laughs> Gotham in South Jersey on the shore yeah. and Metropolis in Delaware on the shore. So okay. that there's kind of. They're like almost like sister cities or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think my brain came from the fact, I grew up, like Fantastic Four was one of my favorite comics, so it's like they were in Manhattan, you know, and I lived in Brooklyn, and I was like, oh, I can just go to Manhattan and see that building, and it, it's a city court building, looks a little like the FF building in a yeah. weird way, you know. <laughs> and um, you used to hang out there? And I used to hang out there. We used to sneak up to the roof, this is before 9-11 and security, and when I was in high school, me and my buddies would buy like a six pack of beer and a bunch of comics, and we'd go sneak up to the roof of the city court building and just hang out there all day. And drink beer and read comics. This was like 90 something stories. It's 60 something stories. It's hot. And it, the, the, the space where we sat was a little wider than this table and sunk it in. Look at me, I'm it, was the on, it was on the top of the table. <laughs> it was crazy. I don't even want to talk about there were no bathrooms up there and what we did, but <laughs> It was, it was it was before the world was so you know shut down and shut up. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, next question. <laughs> you over there. Um, this you. is not really a question, but it's a theory I've always kind of liked that Gotham and New York are the same city. They're both New York. One is daytime, one is nighttime. Oh, I like that. that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. It's like dark city. It's not. Who threw that out there? Who threw that? I don't know that for years. I've also heard the theory that someone said you could join the Jets. Stones are actually underneath the Okay, wait, okay, so when they asked me to pick the Stone Age at one when they pitched, went up and the Morlocks went down. When they asked me to pitch the Jetsons, I said, can I have it so, you know, because the houses are on us, the, their homes are on us long sticks. I said, can the bottom be like the Flintstones and they don't know what's up those? And they're like, no. <laughs> they were like, absolutely not. I'm like, oh. Because I just wanted the Jetsons to like once in a while throw a thing off the oh. side and then my friend just like grab something. And, uh, no. uh, it, it would have been a that better universe. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> but they absolutely said no to that. So. But it could. I, I, I have something in the Jetsons that by the end of the, the six issues it actually leads to Flintstones in an odd way. Uh, but I'll just, just you see, it just, it's just a nod to the beginning of something, so hopefully you'll appreciate it. All right. It's easy when you have a 15-year-old kook son. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, he's both of them. <laughs> Sometimes at the same time, other times at different times, but it's, it, it's easy to draw from him and his friends, but mostly him. He was obviously younger when I first started Batman and Robin. And, uh, I looked at him a lot just for inspiration and a lot of things. I mean, even little things you pick up where, you know, as a writer, you're always sort of, you never stop writing. And we were just in the garage a couple years ago, and he literally, like, you know, took my sneaker and then held it up against, you know, my sneaker, and he was looking at it, and I didn't even know I was watching him. And then, you know, I just put that scene in, in Batman and Robin, and, you know, Bruce looked over and he saw Robin putting his boot against his big boot, and that little, those little human touches, for me, makes a lot of difference in, in telling a story. It says a ton without saying anything. I love that. I love that you did that. That's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so it's... Yeah, it's drawing from real life is, is, is a lot of fun with that stuff. So, and you just got to gear it up in your head. And as long as you can just kind of, I mean, we all have that little part of being a kid in our hearts, and you just got to be able to tap into it, too. You, you, okay. Uh, so, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. So, um, this is more of like a pitch. Uh, would you, would you want to see, I, I would love to see Harley Quinn, for example in the Batman 66 universe, or uh, an Earth right? 2 universe, yeah, yeah. Uh, or a Super Friends episode. So do you have any ideas on what would be a good reinvention for Do you draw? Sorry? Do you draw? Even no, no. 
I was going to say, you can more draw one. Do you write? <laughs> <laughs> I can write. You can write. You can write a good script for it, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, you know, I think she was in Batman 66. If they put Harley in, yeah, one of the comics. Um, yeah, so they were listening to you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you can think about it, they're probably going to do it. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's the way you know about yeah. comics, yeah. yeah. It'll happen eventually. <laughs> I know it's a little off topic, so I apologize, but you mentioned the Jetsons a couple of times. So we've seen Hannah Barbera imprints from DC recently, and we've seen things like Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. And we've also seen things like the Flintstones. And the Flintstones was an incredible, a little bit subversive, and I was actually shocked that it went as long as it did. Now, your take on the Jetsons, which way do you see yourself falling more towards? It's, it's, um it's a, every, uh, hmm. I, I, I want to say Black Mirror a little bit, if you understand what I'm referencing. It's a little, it's a tiny bit dark in the technology department, um, but it's still George and the family. Uh, so it's about a family and things outside the family kind of pulling them apart and then bringing them back together. So it, it's, still, it's still basically focusing on them. It's not George running on the conveyor belt and tripping and, you know, the dog going crazy and, you know. I mean, I, we did do... Um, you know, I did in, in a short story that was in the, one of the annuals, I made George's, George's mother decide to, uh, she was very old, so did, she decided to have her brain transplanted into Rosie the Robot. So that's you know? your, that's your idea then. It's yeah, that was my, oh, wow. yeah, that was my idea. Because I, I figured if you're gonna have an annoying robot, <laughs> it, it could be your mom. <laughs> in, in the robot, you know? and, uh, so George is never without his mom now. She, robot alive forever, but in the future you have a choice. You can either go, you know, naturally, or you can be transferred into some piece of technology. And the mother decided that, well, the kids, you know, Elroy and Judy is still around. She wants around to be around for the kids, so she decides to be transplanted into a robot that is also a helper around the house. So Ma, <laughs> Grandma just wants to stay Grandma, basically, in the story. Um, but. Uh, I also, you know, took the regular characters, and, and uh, Jane is actually works for NASA, and uh, George is like the only guy that knows how to use a screwdriver. The last guy who knows how to use tools. Yes, tool guy, <laughs> and, and Elroy's a little older, a couple years older, and he's got a girlfriend, and then and, 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 and then Judy's a, a film student, uh, who's uh, who in the in the future in in this time they use their dreams, and then they edit their dreams into films, so everybody gets to show their. Dreams as films, you know, and it's it's a, it's a little bizarre, but at the same time, it's still the same family. If you if you know the Jetsons, you'll you'll get everything going on, and then there's a threat. And All right. Get somebody back there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, so like uh, I support the idea of Batman not killing. That's like important, especially as like a dual Superman. But um, so Green Arrow kills when he needs to, and it works for him. He doesn't you know go off the rails by killing when he has to. Um, so I was wondering what your opinion is on like the context difference of why Oliver can pull that off, but Bruce doesn't. Um, I think it's. Bruce and Ollie are very different characters. Uh, for those who didn't hear, it's the the question is uh, how can like Green Arrow, if he needs to, he never wants to, but if he needs to, he will kill a villain. Um, but Batman doesn't. Um, and why what why is that different, and why are they both still heroes? Like, and, and I think the thing is is Ollie, like Ollie's drive is much different. Uh, and. The idea of like the idea of Green Arrow is not it like doesn't have the same weight to Oliver Queen as the idea of Batman has to Bruce Wayne. Uh, Bruce Wayne is this like larger than life figure, and it's also uh, it's what he started becoming when he was an eight year old boy, um, and it be and he became it in the face of murder. Um, and that is something that to then become the thing that he, like, he, like it would be, he would be stepping into the shoes of Joe Chill in that moment for him, and it would break him uh, in a way. So that's why I think that barrier in him as a character is more uh, unassailable uh, than all of that. Um, it's interesting in alternate stories to play with what happens when he does cross that line. Like, for instance, for all of the uh, 
for the metal crossovers, I'm having a lot of fun with uh, the, these evil dark knights that are popping up, and I'm writing the Batman Who Laughs one shot, which is uh, basically the core idea of that is uh, it's a Batman where he is finally pushed to kill the Joker, but the Joker's last laugh is that there is, uh, in his dying breath, is uh, like a nanovirus that rewrites his brain uh, and shuts down the moral centers in Batman's brain. So it's a uh, Batman that has been, that has the, the moral, like the moral mindset of the Joker and it's the most terrifying figure ever. And that's really fun and terrifying to write for an issue, but it's like, it's, I think it also goes to show that like, this is the, like when he talks about the slippery slope and all of that, it is, it is a slope towards extreme darkness. Uh, but yeah, that's my take anyway. Okay, hey, listen, we're, we're at the hour mark. So, um, I want to thank all of you guys, not only for supporting our work, but for actually showing up here today and listening to us ramble on. I want to thank you guys, and hopefully we see you on the floor at the con. And again, thanks from everybody up thanks here. Thanks, everybody.